what you can do to win that race, to have more fun, to do better, is to start thinking about what you're going to do now. And you can break down the sailboat race into a whole bunch of little details. And you can assimilate those details to the point where you really only have to think about a few things while you're racing. So what you have to do is break racing down into all of those tiny little details, figure them out one at a time, so it's not a big surprise to you. When you're going around the mark, you don't have to be thinking, what is the fastest way to get a sailboat around the mark? You already know. You do it by force of habit. You can think now about the wind and the tactics. You don't have to think about what is the fastest way to get a boat around the mark. And if you see yourself losing a boat length or two as you round the mark compared to everybody else, don't let that happen to you. Say, why? Why does that happen? How can I go around the mark faster? Practice it. So I'm going to talk to you about little details so that you can put them in your bag of tricks and say, OK, I don't have to worry about that anymore. I know it. I'll know this situation when I see it. I'll know what to do. And there's a boat length or two right there. There's a boat length or two that adds up to the 20 or so boat lengths that you might be losing by now. Maybe we can get it down to two boat lengths that you're losing by. All of a sudden, you're in the race. So there isn't any one big thing that you have to do right. What you have to do is know all these little situations, recognize them when they come up, and basically have already prepared for them. Does that make any sense? So let's start at the start of the race. I see a lot of boats are, not, are starting late. You've given away a few boat lengths and you're not going to get them back. <coughs> so what do you do? How do you start? What is the best start? I'm not going to tell you how to get the best start. I'm going to tell you how to get a good start that's going to leave you in contention. You've got to be at the line with speed. If you can get clear air, so much the better. If you're worried about plunging into that pack that's all fighting for the favored end of the line, and you're hanging back six lengths, eight lengths, ten lengths because you don't want to do it, then fine, don't do it. Go down the line where it's less crowded. Be on time, with speed. You're going to beat two-thirds of the fleet just by doing that. And when you get comfortable doing that, start moving your way back a little towards the line. Get used to dealing with the pack. Get used to dealing with the rules. You can work your way into it, but know what it is that you're trying to do. You're trying to be on time, with speed, and clear air is always nice, but if you're on time with speed, clear air is going to take care of itself because the other boats are going to be a little bit behind you, or even at worst. Once in a while, once every couple of races, of every couple of regattas, you should be over early. So you know you're doing it. Well, what do you do with your two minutes? You, you take two minutes to run up to the line and time it. You say, I know from <coughs> this spot to the starting line, it's five seconds. And so be there. Know where five seconds from the line is. And when it gets to five seconds, go for the line. You're worried about all these other boats. They're going to get in my way. They're going to zig. They're going to zag. They can't. If they're five seconds from the line and there's five seconds left, they're not going anywhere but for the line. They're going to get out of your way. You don't have to worry about anybody else. You're only going to have to worry about out to windward, out to leeward. So that whole mob that you were worried about, they're gone. If you can master the timing, you only have to worry about the right of way over those other two boats. Practice it. If you're worried about plunging into that fleet, stay a little bit away from them. Just hit the line on time with speed. You're going to not give up all those extra boat lengths. Right there, you're in contention right from the start of the race. And I suggest to you that that's more fun. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. Do you think that's something you can do? You work on it every race. In that two minutes, you can you can do five starts, ten starts. Just keep timing right out. And you'll look and look at the other boats. You'll see them doing the same. And it's not coming out of your race time. It's something you're doing during the start. You're just hanging around anyway. The other thing you should be doing before the race, so you don't have to figure it out during the race, sail up the course. You don't want the first time you figure out the ley line to the mark to be during the race. You want to already know. You don't want to overstand. You've just given somebody a couple of boat lengths for nothing. 
All you had to do was sail up the course, go around the mark. It's hard to judge these marks. I often go up there, become late, start the race, I go up there, I go around the first mark, and I cut inside. I misjudge the distance. If I was smart enough to go up there and take my own advice and find the ley line and go around it, then that wouldn't happen to me. That would cost me a race. Because I'm dumb. And what do you learn while you're zigzagging up the course? The, the way that we sail these boats is mostly on ponds. Ponds are characterized by trees and buildings, and that causes the wind to do all sorts of weird little quirky things. This is the big secret. Is these quirky things, when you're sailing up the course and all of a sudden your sails start to shiver for no good reason and you keep going and it's cleared up, it's going to happen again. That spot is always there. Those weird little things, there's more wind on the right, there's more wind on the left, there's a calm spot here, there's a lift over there. Assume that those are fixtures. Assume that that will happen race after race after race. It does change a little bit, but most of the time, that's a feature of the water you're sailing on. You can learn that by sailing up the course between races, before the first race. You can map in your head where on the race course is that weird little knuckle. I call it a knuckle, that spot where the wind does something. Who knows what it does? But it does it. I, when I had a, a telltale fly, just a piece streamer on the masthead, it used to blow straight up sometimes. I took it off. <laughs> I don't know how to tune for that. <laughs> so, but it, you hit that knuckle. What happens? I mean, what do you do? You're sailing close haul. You're going upwind. Your sails start to shiver. What does that tell you? That's information, but what is it? Has there, has there been a, 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 a header? You watch what happens. You're either going to bear away or you're going to tack. But if you know it's a knuckle, if you know it's one of those little micro swirly things, keep going. And I, I was at the Nationals in Halifax, and there was one of these knuckles just below the windward mark. And boat after boat, race after race, would hit the knuckle, and they would bear away, or they would tack, and they were heading away from the mark. Nobody caught on to the fact, except me, that you could just go through it. And so that information was there for everybody. That is a feature of pond sailing. There is going to be a knuckle. If there are trees behind the windward end or buildings, there are going to be these little swirly spots. And they're going to be in the same place most of the time. They might move around a little bit as the wind moves <coughs> a little bit. But most of the time, it's going to be there. And you can take advantage of it. You need to know what it is. And you can find it before the race starts. You don't have to make a decision instantaneously on the spot. And everyone else in the fleet, all of those other boats, are gathering intelligence for you. They're finding knuckles. They're finding bald spots. They're finding lifts for you. No charge. Just pay attention. So assume that everything that happens to the wind and you can see what happens to the wind. I assume that it's going to happen again. It's going to happen the next time you go up that leg. It's going to happen in the next race. Because mostly it does. And the one time that you're going to feel like a real hero, I mean many times, because when you predict it right, you feel great. Even if you get it at random, you're going to feel great. But in light air, when you're carrying your carrot, you just want there to be wind. It's the same thing as heavy air, it's just a lot slower. And when you start to slow down, you start to coast and you stop. What do you want to happen next? You're sailing along in light air. The wind goes light. Your boat is going to come to a stop. What do you do? You get to decide. Where do I want to be when the wind starts up again? You've got some momentum. You can choose to coast in what direction you want to go for a little while. So have a plan. You know where the wind was coming from before. It might well come back from that direction. So most likely, it's the only if that's the only direction it's been coming, that's probably the direction it's going to come back from. But when it goes light, sometimes that means there's really two winds in opposition. And one of them will prevail, but it might be a new one. But you will already have seen it. There will already have been a puff or two from the other direction. So now you're down to a choice of two wind directions. And you can plan. Where the worst that you can do, where the, you know, it's not a bad option, is just aim the boat straight for the mark because that's where you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> now you're sailing along on one of those light air days, and you're sailing nicely. 
cruising right along, and your boat starts to lock. What do you do? What does it mean? It could mean a header. It could mean one of those nasty knuckles. But on a light air day like that, it could mean the wind just died, and it's just the apparent wind pushing your sail back. And it's surprising how many people don't catch on to that, including me. You're not expecting that feeling. You don't think that it's just... It's like when you're sailing a big boat and the wind goes light and your spinnaker starts to blow back, you sort of catch on. You know? <laughs> but it's a little more subtle in a, in a fore and aft rig when your sail's luffing and it looks like a header, it looks like a wind shift. Or it looks like one of those knuckles and all it really is is the wind has gone calm. But you look at the other boats, they say, okay, I better bear away and stay with the wind. So they wind up heading way off the course, trying to find wind because they think there's wind, they think there's a header. They think there's still wind there. And they wind up sailing away and giving away many boat lengths. And you look at a boat after the wind has died and after they're all coasted to a stop, they're just pointing in every different direction as they start hunting wind that isn't there because they're being lied to by that luff at the front of the sail. And you put in your catalog, your mental file. This is a light air day. This wind is going to die. And it might die just like that. I'm going to sail it to a bald spot and there won't be any wind right there. And you know how you know what it is. Now you know what to do. Sail straight for the mark. Hope the wind comes back from the same place it was at before. If you think it's going to come back from a different direction, sail towards that. But at least you've made a choice. If you win at random because you were deceived, then you know whoever one of the boats will do well, but who? Won't be you. So it's one of those little things. Out of that whole pattern of knowing what to do in a race, there's a little thing you can put in your toolkit, now you know. How do you go around a windward mark? What is the fastest way to get your boat around the windward mark? I hope you already know. But if you don't already know, here's what happens. When a sailboat is healing, it wants to go towards the high side. If you, and when you're going around the windward mark, you want to steer towards the low side. So let your sails in. Because if you if the boat is healing as you go around and you're pushing the rudder the other way, you're slowing yourself down much more than you need to. You're fighting your boat. You're fighting the way it wants to turn by using the rudder. If you're not in the boat. You don't have your hand on the tiller. You can't feel the boat fighting you. But if you sail a big boat, you will feel it. And if you sail on a heavy air day and you keep the sails in tight and you try to bear away, you can't. Your boat is a weather vane. You're fighting that, that tendency. So learn about that. As you go around the weather mark, ease your sails out so they're trimmed to the course, so they're properly set for the wind all the way around. So you're easing continuously, steering continuously. Your boat is under power the whole way around. Radio control sailboats are powerful boats. So if you have it, your pedal to the metal all the way around that mark, you're going to come out a boat length or so ahead, too, ahead of the boat that just keeps the sails in tight, turns around, and then eases them out. Why would you give that away? Learn how to do it. Go out there, practice it a few times. It's not a hard skill to learn. And then the next time you go to the weather mark, you don't have to be thinking about that. You know what turn radius you want. You know how to ease the sail as you go around continuously. You know what to do. You don't have to be. Now you can be thinking about tactics. Now you can be thinking about what drive should be on, I be on when I'm on the next course. So it's one skill. How do you go around a mark? Now you'll know. Let's think about going around the downwind mark. It's the opposite. Remember how I said a boat was a weather vane? It wants to go to the high side. It wants to round up. If you're off the wind and you trim the sails in, your boat will try to round up by itself. That's great. You don't want to use, you want to use the least rudder you can. So if you can make the boat heel, if you can make the boat want to round itself up by trimming, over trimming the sails, that's what you do. You get to the downwind mark, you're ready to round the mark and head upwind. Trim the sails in as tight as you can. As you go around the mark, force the boat round to windward by itself. It's faster than using the rudder because the rudder is a brake. Water is, what, 650 times denser than air, something like that. And you're taking something and jamming it sideways against the water. It's going to stop your boat. <coughs> you don't want it to do that. So you find a nice turning radius, practicing. Trim your sails in gradually. Trim them in quickly. Find a way that gets the boat around the mark the fastest. Go down with a buddy and go around and see who comes out a boat length or two ahead. Try to 
right? Two different ways, two different boats. One person trims in the sails really quickly, the other one trims them in more slowly, go around behind each other and find out what's the fastest. But once you have it in your toolkit, you don't have to make it up on the race course every time. You already know. You already planned half your race. And every time you pick up one of these skills, you've got an extra couple of boat lengths in the bag. Instead of as the race goes on fading back and back, you're in a position to get the right shift, counterattack, and move yourself up to the front of the fleet. Or build on your lead. <coughs> One of the things that I did when I took up radio control sailing was I started to read all these books on sailing. How do you sail fast? How do you do these things? And eventually you find someone who speaks to you in a way that you can understand. So I'm telling you these things, and, it, and it, I may make no sense to you. I'm only telling you the things that stuck with me. But if you do this reading, you will find people articulating what they've learned in the way that makes sense to them, and some of that will stick with you. And if you learn from that skills you can try, then uh, so much the better. And it was Dennis Connor's book that taught me about timing. He's very keen on knowing how far you are from the start. And if you watch the America's Cup, you've got the boats wired for sound. The tactician says to the helmsman, you're 32 seconds from the line. I want to marry that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to know 32 seconds, but you can know 5 seconds, you can know 10 seconds. In a radio control boat, that's all you need. So practice it. Do it. Now, the starting line of our, of our races, when I set them, I try to set the port one a little bit ahead, so that <coughs> ideally the course is even regardless of where you start on the line. I mean, there's still a starboard attack advantage, but um, when you look at our pond, you can tell things, or any pond, you can tell things like, is there more wind on one side than the other? And quite a, we've got flags on our line. Sometimes one of them's hanging and one of them's flapping. That's a clue. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's deceptive, but quite often it's a clue. Or there could be a bald lane, no wind in it, right next to that flag. But you can figure that out. Your boat is an instrument for detecting the wind. So you really don't have an excuse for not knowing. So s try a start on the side where there's more wind, even if it looks like a less favored end because it's the port end, or because you know, it might be a little further downwind. Try it. What's the worst that can happen? You have one race where you have to make something up. And in our, in our race courses, because we're on ponds, you're often going to find there's a nice streak of wind, but then there's a gap <laughs> before the next one. And you kind of have to choose. Am I going to take that lane and then pay the penalty? Or am I going to go with slow and steady on this side? What am I going to do? Make the decision with your eyes open. You know, make a choice. What's the worst that can happen? I mean, you're not gonna, you don't want to sail a pen. And you'll see that it changes a little bit. You know, the right side is a little weaker, but then it sort of builds as the day goes on. Eventually, it's open to you. you. You take a chance. You go over there, and you sneak in, and you win a race. All of these clues are available to you. Uh, tacking. I don't really have anything to say about tacking. I don't know of a, of a way to, to learn it apart from this. Take two or three boats, sail upwind together, get somebody to say, tack. So you go... You sail along together, you get up to speed, somebody says, tack, you all tack together. Try different turn radiuses. Try easing your sheets just a little bit as you go through the tack and then trim them in as you come out when you've accelerated up to speed. See if you need to do that or see if it's all right to just tack with your sails in full all the time. Maybe it depends on the wind. But learn the fastest turning radius for your boat. You'll see. One boat will go ahead, the other boat will fall behind. Practice it. That's a skill. You tack many times in each race day. How often do you practice it? How do you know that you're tacking the fastest way it's possible to tack? So I, I did a video, I hope you've seen it, and I hope it's helpful, uh, on how to set up your, your soling, but really, you know, it's the same idea for any class of boat. And the idea of that video was to give you a starting point, a, a quick setup that will get you competitive and get you on the water. And if you find little things about your boat that you want to adjust, that make you go faster, that, that are better suited to you, good. 
But this is a quick, fast setup that gets you going. And when you're spending your time down at the water and you're having one of these events, you, uh, you want to spend your time on the things that you don't control. You want to spend your time watching the water, <coughs> seeing how the wind is shifting. The wind shifts a little bit, where do the knuckles move to? Where are the lanes change to? Because that's what you need to know. That's what uh, you can spend your time profitably learning about. You can spend your time chatting with your friends, and they're nice people, but uh, you're there to sail, and you're there to have fun. And that intelligence is there for the Aussie. You can see the patterns of wind on the water. You can see the flags on the marks. And every other boat is telling you what to do. Um, is that helpful in any way? Yes. yes. OK. Um, are there any questions? Dave, I think you missed the most important one as far as you know, making sure you get a good day of, of sailing and, and doing the best you can is follow David. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do that. Some, somebody else should have that trophy next year. I tried to, I tried to follow along, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, any comments on the depth of perception? You know, if you see the situation where somebody's missed the mark and the next guy is 20 feet beyond the mark, and, I mean, really old trying to the horizontal line you've got. Do you have any comments on that? Um, well, a couple of things. One is it, it helps tremendously to walk with your boat as much as you're allowed to do. Now the, the rules now are set up to encourage you to have a control area, which sort of encourages you to confine skippers to an area so you can hear each other hail, um, which has advantages and disadvantages. You want civility uh, in a group. So you, you don't want two people bickering from 100 yards apart. That's not all that much nicer when you're bickering from five yards apart uh, <laughs> in a crowd. So let's have no bickering. But walking with your boat has lots of advantages, and it moves you close. But the other thing is, even if you want to round it from a distance, do it a few times, and you'll learn that your, your gunnel comes up to here on the mark. You'll learn that your mast top is level with that bush when you're right at, on the ley line. That's why you sail it in advance. There are clues. Watch where the shadow falls from your mast. Um, and watch where it falls on the other boats when they go around, you'll find some clues that, that help you do it. You can get uh, flip up binoculars too, and I'd like to see how you work with that. <laughs> I found one clue that if you're sailing on a calm day and the water's got the glassy, you can watch your wake. Okay. Your wake's past the boy, you're past. Okay, well you're fairly far past the boy by the time your wake has gone oh, by. Yeah, yeah, you're, so you're, you're not right up close to it, but at least yeah. you know you're not going to cut the front. Yeah. And it's, it's not necessary to, to tell someone else that they've missed the mark. Um, it's, it's courteous. Um, but if they, you, know, you really need to finish well in front of them, you might wait half an hour to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I won a nice regatta in Newport once in full-size boats because the Brazilians went around in lobster pot instead of the windward mark. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you talked uh, about uh, having good speed uh, through the start line. Mm -hmm. And you also, on another occasion, talked about uh, uh, standing still until the uh, appropriate moment. Of okay. Off. Opposite and advice. Well, I've given uh, opposite advice, is your point. There, which is different scenarios, perhaps. Right. One, one was to, to hit the line with speed on time, and the other one was just to park there. By the way, I prefer the speed. And <laughs> accelerate it at the last second. And, and the answer is there are times when you do one and the times when you do the other. The IOMs, for example, are very powerful boats. They'll accelerate from a standing start in, in two seconds. They'll be going full speed. So you go up to the line, you park at the spot you want, and you defend it. And that's a little more difficult to do. And it's the skill level in the fleet is very high, but you learn to do it. Um, and once again, once you're in that pack, once you're there on the line, you're really worried about the boat to windward, the boat to leeward, yeah. and uh, and maybe you know that space you have to leeward, you want to keep the space so that you can bear off and accelerate, um, and somebody's going to want that space. They're going to try and hit it with speed at the start. And once they're overlapping with the leeward, you have certain obligations as the windward boat. So if you, uh, it's, it's a little harder to do a standing start. You do it when there's enough wind to accelerate you up to speed quickly, uh, before you hit the line. So you're still hitting the line at full speed at the gun. It's a question of where you start. Uh, another question. Uh, sorry, one more thing. Okay, about sorry. The advantage of, of hitting the line from a distance with speed, reaching down the line behind the line, um, 
before the start, is you do have, speed gives you maneuverability. So if you see trouble coming, you see a hole open up, you can always lose a bit of speed, work the rudder, lock the sails, bear away. But gaining speed is harder because um, the acceleration that you get when you're soloing by itself on the pond is not the same as the acceleration it gets when it's in a pack of boats at the starting line. If the wind is lighter, you're going to get a lot less wind across the sails. So don't deceive yourself. If you're practicing that acceleration, that start, and you count your five seconds, make sure you're counting it the same way. If you're going to count it from a standing start, then you know, allow for the fact that you're going to accelerate more slowly when there's a fleet around you. And uh, allow for the fact that it's a, you know, five seconds takes a lot longer when you have to accelerate than when you uh, start your five seconds going fast. Sorry, there was there another question? Yeah, the tuning versus tactics. Um, you're talking a lot about tactics here, uh, you know, things you do on the pond. And I see lots of guys taking a boat in after every race and making some changes, which are beyond me. And I also remember Ray Davidson could pick up anybody's boat and, and beat the rest of the fleet with it. It didn't matter. But what, what are your thoughts? Do you think we, we put too much emphasis on the tuning sometimes? Well, I think you want it all to be as perfect as it can be because the, the top sailors are. Um, if, you're, if you're tuning after every race, it's because you're, either something has changed in the wind or you're, not, you're nervous and you're just frustrated that you didn't do so well in the last race and you need something to blame. <laughs> <laughs> and if you see me rushing to my boat and adjusting something, that's probably it. There wasn't anything wrong with it. I just you know, need to be tweaking something or else I had it wrong. So don't feel obliged to adjust your boat. If you come off the water and you think, well, the boat's going well. I was pointing as high as the other boats. I was going as fast as the other boats. Then be thinking about, well, you know, who won and where, where did they sail? Where was the wind? Why did they win? But go to the pond with the boat that's in good working order. And, you know, the hull is smooth. It doesn't have dings or nicks in it. So it's as fast as it can be. If you lose, it's not because of the boat. Um, Peter. One point you might make is if you're one of these guys that loves sailing down the line, so they can cut over. And I'm coming up to the mark, sailing on the right course, going to get my mark at the time. You're coming up, you have to go over there. Okay. You the, have to turn that. The, the, the point about, about uh, at the starting line, there are there are times when you can be forced over. If, you, if you're on starboard and you're close to the line and the boat comes up to lure, you have to keep clear you're the windward boat. If you're on port and you're reaching down towards a pack of starboard tackers, you got to get out of there somehow, and it may be that you just have to go across the line and go, go around the end. But you, you do have to respect your obligations. The, the better way to look at it is know what your rights and obligations are and use them to your advantage. Now, when you're at the starting line and you're sailing, uh, <coughs> And there's going to be an overlap situation. Somebody's going to be the windward boat and someone's <coughs> going to be the li leeward boat. The rights of the overtaking boat, say it's overtaking to leeward. The boat that's overtaking to leeward doesn't achieve rights until that overlap begins. So the windward boat is not obliged to anticipate. He can see you coming, but he doesn't have to do anything about it until there actually is an overlap. Now, if you stick your bow just to leeward of a windward boat stern, and he does what he has to do. He has to go up to the wind because he has to keep clear of you. When you turn a sailboat, the bow goes up and the stern goes down. If his stern comes down and hits that leeward boat, who committed the foul? The leeward boat committed the foul if he didn't give room to keep clear. Now, the race committee is supposed to, in theory, say uh, if the windward boat doesn't put its helm down, chooses to sail on for a while and then put its helm down, well, it's kind of accepted the situation and, and, and claimed that there was room to keep clear because otherwise it would attack. So uh, you need to be aware of that. If you're the overtaking boat, you've got to give that windward boat. I mean, the guy's not going to get up, pick up the boat, move it out of your way. <laughs> it's got to go somewhere. So you've got to be alert. Great. Good. Well, thank you, you very much, okay. David. David's going to be around for a little while, so I'm sure that he'll uh, enter in. Uh, so thank you very much, David. <laughs> <laughs>